All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker up on TSN 4. Brian Hazio, Doug Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. Where are we at here? How are you feeling? Are you feeling good about your weekend or no? Yeah, I'm feeling great about my weekend. Where's the score? What's the score? Noodles, (laughs) it's eight in one. And to sum it up, I had to get a couple vegetables and some fruits at Sobeys, okay? Mm -hmm. And a gentleman said, Hazy B's the Harold Ballard of making (laughs) picks. And I said, you know what? That is a great, a great comparison. Harold Ballard. Why? Because he's just out of sorts. He's just all over the place. It's poorly run. He's Harold Ballard to make an NFL. <laughs> That's <pick>. insulting. <laughs> I'll, listen, I'll take a lot of heat for different things. You compare me to Harold Ballard as a Toronto kid. That is disgusting. Okay, and I'm well, personally send in your, offended. Co- That's blasphemy. Send in That's your blasphemy. comparison. <laughs> send in your comparisons to any like you're one in eight. Shirelli? Any type of like Leafs management <laughs> <JFK>? type. <laughs> oh. Or any. Co- I'll Are tell you, you what. The Fergler? Are you the Fergler? I'd of rather NFL be picks? known as Fergie than Harold Ballard. You know Ooh. this. Harold Ballard is the last person on earth. Okay. If you're from if you Toronto, can you send be anything in with. about a Toronto executive that this guy's compared to with a one and eight start, send him in. Okay. Or you know what? It could be all pro. Sp- Colangelo. Hey, right. B gets a burner account. No, I was just going to say what Aaron hey, means. B gets a burner Aaron's account. Aaron's got a burner account. I do. I need my Mine's wife to Mine's been working hard at That's, home. Yeah, find a new <laughs> slant. I need my wife to create burner accounts to start competing with idiots at Sobe or wherever it happens to be online who are supporting me. It's early. I picked a winner yesterday. The Cowboys are rolling. We've got two games tonight. I feel good about my game, right? Saints at uh, Carolina, and you've got the Browns at, who are they playing? Pittsburgh tonight. So we got Luke Wilson coming up. I'll admit, you guys are picking winners. Now you're getting the biggest layups of the season. Of this, this is Globetrotters versus the Washington Generals every single oh, really? game you pick. What it's is so easy about the Browns game versus the Steelers? This one will I be like... tough tonight, but the Patriots stink, and of course you got that game. They stink. Although what that was that was that a first down at the end? Yes, yeah, so it should have been based on the incredible nature of the play. It was an unbelievable. Like give them that. If give them that. Ty goes to the great play. Exactly. Ty should go to an offensive lineman reaching out for a first down, and then bullets through just eight forget people about that every time. Stuff the Patriots. Suck. And I think Billy Belichick might throw his clipboard in the stands <laughs> and just go to Nantucket and get the iPad out and go on Tinder because he's single, he's pissed off, and he's fed up with Mac Jones and company. Yeah, well, that offense is terrible to watch. We need to petition certain teams in the NFL. Cannot be on primetime. Well, they cannot be on primetime, and the Patriots are one of them. Let me ask flex you guys. them out. Yeah, flex them out. we got to ask out. Luke, but where do, where do the coaches usually keep the challenge flag? <laughs> Like, is it in their this pocket? Guy, he's got Why was he, he had it stuffed in his sock. Yeah, like it's a gun or something. <laughs> he, he like he's an undercover this. cop. Like noodles. You know when you get you ask the trainers for some socks, you can go like with thin whites, yeah. thicks. That guy's got triple thick whites. Yeah. And he's got his little challenge stuffed but in there. But it was, you, I thought they have them in their pocket. Yeah, like you He pulls think. his right pant leg up halfway up his knee and then pulls out a challenge flag and then launches it against the ground right in front of the ref, like basically saying, this is ridiculous. Yeah, chew on that. He was disgusted last oh. night, but he was disgusted with his own team, his yeah. own offense. Mac Jones is okay. He's just okay. He's yeah. not going to be great. He's not mobile. He doesn't have a great arm, and they have no weapons there. And it's, <laughs> listen, New England Patriots fans, you had an incredible 20 years. Oh, jumped on your bandwagon for 20 years. Yeah. That's how good it was. Yep. Oh, jumped on your bandwagon for 20 years, and now he's out, and now you're stuck. You're stuck with a mediocre team that's not going anywhere, and yeah. they're not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. So, you know, chew on that one, and yeah, we already got some submissions here. Rob Babcock is one that's coming up. Raptors GM, he was the oh one that made the Vince God, Carter deal, and it was an guy was awful something trade. something else. Something else, Rob. Yeah, you could just tell the second he got to town, you're like, I think he and Fergie were hired within, like, Months of each other, if not wow. weeks. Yeah, they were. That was a tough one for MLSC. That burglar like, and a guy named Rob Bab. I've never heard. Obviously, the name Babcock is very it's prevalent. That, it's trending. It's in the news right now. We'll get to that. Oh, but yeah. I've never heard of this other character. Yeah, Rob Babcock. He was like a long time. It was much like Fergie. He was hanging around the NBA for a long time. Generally, Pfeiffer. an assistant GM, and I think he was in Minnesota for a long time. And then he got the job here, and he got sewered because, like, right when he got here, Vince Carter was like, "Nope." 
I'm out, and I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> and he made a trade, and it's one of the worst trades really? probably in NBA history when you look back on it now. It was just a horrendous trade. And this was long before players demanding out and demanding where to go. Like right. Vince was basically like, all right, trade send me, anyway. me somewhere, work out a deal. And it, uh, it really, really went south. It was an awful trade. Like they got nothing back or like? Pretty much nothing. Like they, they got a couple of picks. They got a couple of players. They got the Williams brothers. They weren't brothers, actually, but they were both, their last names were Williams. They had they Alonzo Mourning, who didn't even return his call. Like he didn't even show up. Alonzo Mourning was like this stealth bomber <laughs> plane that just disappeared. Can you imagine you trade for a guy and the guy just flushes your calls? Not no, answering. That's what he did, Noodles. He just, he, he was nowhere to be found. Like I don't even think he stepped foot in the city. He never did. They ended up buying no, him no, out. I don't. <laughs> they ended up buying him out. He just said, I'm not doing that. Sorry. I'm not just... accepting that. I know you traded for me, but I'm not doing that. What would be the emoji if they had text and say, hey, we just traded for you? Would like thumbs down? Basically like, a thumbs no, down. just peace sign. Peace or, emoji. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Or middle finger. Yeah, middle yeah. finger emoji. Sorry. Just absolutely Sorry. not. Oh, yeah, so Paul funny. sending in a tweet. This one hurts. <laughs> Horacek. My boy Horacek. <laughs> I know you love Horacek, Peter yeah. Horacek. I, I'm a Horacek he is a good fan. guy. He's awesome. a great guy. That guy got steamrolled by a bunch of jerks that quit on the season. <laughs> he did. But now look what you've brought up. Who was the guy? You're comparing me to Peter <laughs> Horacek. No, no, you're Harold Ballard. When no, the guy floated out Harold Ballard at Sobeys, I was in love with I wanted to kiss the guy. That's and disgusting. Say, that is exactly. That's uncalled he for. Is garbage I don't like, like Who Harold. was the coach in Buffalo with the gardening gloves? What was that guy? Ronnie oh, Rolston. Ronnie he Rolston. Got steamrolled, too. Yeah. Ronnie Rolston. Man. And they're bitter down in Buffalo, like a couple of different reasons. One, you see Takeo Spikes was there. He was a great Bills player. <laughs> he was there kind of being honored, and they stuffed him in like the janitor's a win of, office. Yeah, in a Winnebago in the corner. He was way up in the corner with a, with a, a view where he could barely see half the field, and yeah. he tweets it out. This Basically, his tweet was, this organization sucks. <laughs> this view sucks. I'm out of here. Peace sign. Yeah. He left. And he admitted Marner, he left the game. Marner and Riley were probably like on the field. They literally yeah. were. That's the best part about this. To KO Spikes, who there he is. Oh Look at that. God. Look at that view he's got up there. An obstructed view. You can see it on TSN four. And Morgan Riley and Mitch Marner are going down there. So yeah. two lifelong leaves, two great leaves. Two guys who are obviously beloved up here, but hated in Buffalo. <laughs> and the Bills post pictures like, hey, welcome to town. Love seeing you guys. Yeah. A couple visitors from the north came down, and Mitch is down there. Morgan's down there in Bills jerseys. And obviously, the Bills understand they need to capture the Toronto market. Sure. It's a massive market. They want to have access to it, and they want to be popular here because they can make money. And there's a lot of ticket holders from southern Ontario that make their way over there. Yeah. Dylan Cousins but tweets on it. Dylan Cousins, <laughs> who is obviously a very good Buffalo Sabres, he responds with the, like, the hand, over, hand the over the face emoji. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, Sabres camps are opening this week. Get yeah. Cousins and Tage Thompson down there. Yeah. Get Rasmus Dahlin and Owen Power out there. Like, Not two Leaf players. Thumbs up like, hey, loving the Leafs. Right. Like, right there. Yeah, Same owner, too. Owns same owner. the team. Yep. Same owner. That's Jerry Pagula, tough. that's right. That is tough. That, I mean, is, that is tough. That's a miss, too. Like, you've got a legendary player. You can't treat him like that. The, He's got to be. The obstructed view. Like, oh, you can speak to the alumni box yeah. Ever since Shanahan got here, I think when Harold Ballard was running the show, that's what the Leafs were subjected to. <laughs> the Leafs alumni box was probably at the Gardens, you know, who knows where the hell it was, but I'll guarantee it was terrible. And Shanahan obviously showed up. I think it's well documented. So we got to treat people better than this. Like yeah. the Leafs of the past, and they got a great setup. The alumni box is outstanding. Clearly, the Bills need to do something similar. Yeah. They Clearly, they need to get in contact with someone who knows how to treat alumni because that's not going to cut it. Um, but yeah, speaking of Marner Riley, I guess the Leafs are at their golf outing today. And, um, I saw a couple of great pictures posted of Tyler Bertuzzi and Max Domi, both of them without their teeth in, Yeah, they're great. which I think is a great introduction to the market. No jibs. Yes. If you have, if you have a smile that is missing teeth and you're a hockey player and you're new to the market and obviously everyone knows Domi, everyone knows Bertuzzi, but I say go with it. Yeah. Anytime you can but have I no teeth, wonder, go like, for I it. I see Drew Doughty, and it's like, you have a hundred million in the bank. Why do you not have front teeth like golfing? Mm -hmm. Like, where are they? <laughs> 
Like, Gar- where do you not have? Are you just not going to get them until you're done playing hockey? Put some fake ones in. Well, I guarantee you, he has that retainer with them in them. Mm-hmm. You know, but he probably is like one of those guys who's like, yeah, I left it on the counter before I left the house. Right. Like that kind of money. Dentistry is not is not cheap, but Doughty is worth a fortune. He could walk in there and get new teeth every six months. Yeah. And it's it's couch cushion money for him. But there are players that are guys that you expect to have no jibs. Like when I think of Tyler Bertuzzi, every time I've seen that guy, he's he's gritty looking. Right. So that that yeah, no teeth that fits the guy. I think he is going to. He be. showed up with giant piano keys like uh, Matt Dillon. Yeah, something about Mary. The Rex Ryan on ESPN. You see Rex? <laughs> it's, he has more teeth than the average human. Than a shark. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like he has fake teeth, but they also added teeth. I swear he's got forty-five teeth. Yeah, that's. He tough. has to have forty plus. See, but I would just if you if you're missing jibs, you should like I would feel awkward if I was missing a tooth. Like period. Right. It would just feel weird. But, but they you know, know it. They know the cameras are out. Like Max and, and Bertuzzi, they know that they're doing the scrums and these guys have no teeth in. Yeah. Like, I think it's a great introduction. It is. And yeah. let's listen, those two players, you know, Ryan Reeves was speaking with the media today. There's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of new blood here that I think a lot of fans are really gonna gravitate to. Yeah. Right. And possibly a full year of Matthew Nyes. Like obviously the the usual suspects are here and people are gonna gravitate to Matthews and Marner and Right. Nylander, et cetera. But these other guys, you know, they play a different style. Um, I think they've got some personality, and I think that was a big part of the intention of signing them. Obviously, they have to have an impact. That's why you sign guys, not just to be characters or, right. you know, dar- darlings in the media. they they got to contribute, and I fully expect that they will. But, wow. um, but, but this team has always had kind of a – very just kind of no nonsense, kind of just business. Like not a lot of big personalities. Like mm-hmm. in the past years, what has been the who has been the big personality out of that room? Mitch Marner, I think, has a bit a big personality, but he's gotten more introverted as the years have gone on. I know, but noodles on the ice. Let's be honest. Every other organization that came in here said these guys are soft, and it's well documented that anyone coming into Toronto said you're not. It, it's they're very skilled, they're very good, but it's not like anything like a punishing type well, of hockey game coming into that building. That's why I had that disagreement with Jonas the other day. Because Jonas is down on the Reeves contract and all of that. But I, my understanding, and, and all three of us can speak to this, when you have a dynamic like that on your bench, in your room, it, it just makes feel somebody feel a little bit different. doesn't mean that Matthews is going to go out and fight. It's more about the deterrent, the thought process. And I brought up, you think Travis Konecki is going to be swatting away or jousting with Austin Matthews with Reeves 20 feet away? They may not be on the same ice, but the next time Reeves get out, gets out there, he'll have something ready for him. Well, That's the way I feel. About I, it. I agree with you, but I think there are limitations on that. And like today I noticed that there were quotes going around. Ryan Reeves was asked about that famous picture, Ratko Gudis, after the OT winner that sent the Leafs pack and where he's yelling in the face of Joseph Wall. Yeah. And... I don't even know why Reeves would be asked about something yeah, that, that, that particular. Let me guess his comment. His guess comment is that would never happen on my watch. Essentially, I'd like to, I'd like <laughs> to see him it. try just, it. And that's th- leading the witness to yeah. that. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> like, but that's where, again, it's ridiculous. Like, th- that is not going to stop Radko Gudis in a massively emotional moment nope, no. from yelling. What's he going to do, fight him in the handshake line? The series yeah. is over. So I'm not blaming Reeves for answering it. What else is Reeves supposed to say? Of course he's going to say, I'd like to see him try that again. It'd be fun. And I think that's kind of the answer he gave. But this is the kind of stuff where if you think that's going to happen, then you're being ridiculous. And even posing the question, and I don't know how it was posed, to be fair, but what the hell is Ryan Reeves going to do when the series is over? Nothing. Nothing to Nothing. Radko Gudis. So think- he, it, it's not going to change a situation like that. And no. the idea that what Gudis is going to not be happy that there was chase an OC down, winner? Chase him down in the parking lot? Yeah, line. exactly. Like, My whole on, thing is the attitude. Here. My whole thing is the attitude and, you know, the ability. I, I, I always said having a tough guy on the, on the bench was the equivalent of driving down the 401 and the minute you see a cop, what's the first thing you do? You take your foot off the gas. You 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 change your your approach to things a little bit. Doesn't mean you're not speeding. Doesn't mean you're not going to change the fact that you're driving. There's just a little slight thing in your head going, all right, there's a cop watching, or this there's there's that person in the building. And and to me, I, I witnessed it. Now again, 
Late 90s, 2000, the game was completely different. Fighting's almost gone. But when you have the toughest guy in the building on your side, you do act a little bit different. That's the way I feel. It might be different for this Leaf group, but I feel that Ryan Reeves, his value will go beyond kind of the ice. It'll go more into an attitude of the group. That's I think the that's way what I they're think. hoping for. I, I think, again, these guys, I think having personalities, having guys that are willing to speak, right. I think that goes a long way. I think it's necessary, and I think it adds to the entertainment value. I, I remember saying this when Reeves got signed, and I haven't changed my opinion on his impact in the playoffs, which I don't expect yeah, he'll have one. I'm not convinced right. he even plays. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But the fact is, this is the entertainment business. 82 games is a long season. Yeah. And I think Ryan Reeves is going to supply a number of moments over the course of the year where Leaf fans are going to say, that was fun, yeah. or that was different, or wow, I'm looking forward to seeing what happens tonight based on what Reeves could bring to that table. Right. And for me, that is still compelling. And that is still worth um, you know, the possibility of, of some semantics. You well, know, and, and, and possibility of, of some old school hockey coming to Toronto, which we really haven't seen in a while. And and Reeves is a is a bigger than life personality. And yeah. he's tough and he's noticeable and he's gonna bring a dimension that they haven't had to the same extent. You mentioned Jonas, like Wayne Simmons, Wayne Simmons is tough as nails and Wayne right. would fight, but Wayne was not like a heavyweight, heavyweight. Right. Um he was you know, a, a middle to heavyweight. Kyle Clifford barely played. Right. Reeves is playing. Like what comes with that contract is he's playing 82 games. Like he's dressing 82 times. Right. What happens in the playoffs is a different story. But even if they play the softest team in the league on a Tuesday, Reeves is playing. Like I don't think Keith's taking him out of the line. I could be uh, wrong on that, it, but I'd be shocked in but year he's one. An option to you, and again, it's more about the attitude, thought process. Max Domi plays with some edge. Tyler Bertuzzi plays with some edge. Those two aren't killers, though. No. Like, that, if anyone's thinking all. they're fighting they're every not, night, like, not, that's not how they play. And I hope that Max Domi doesn't try the David Clarkson doing too much mm -hmm. early on because his dad's There's a legend. There's not many killers, Hazy. Like, yeah. like, when you think about Ryan Reeves going into 23 24, how many guys actually want to drop the gloves with that man? There's probably Four? six in the league. Yeah. yeah. I, Four you know, to six? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, and, and, that's not the thing. It's more about having him on your side. That's that's the exactly, way I look at it. Exactly. Exactly. That's the way I, I feel about it. Max Domi, I just I I think of him. Remember David Clarkson coming home? He just got so excited and wanted to to endear himself and do too much. I think Max can just play hockey. Yep. And he plays with some edge. He doesn't he doesn't fight a lot or anything, but he does play with some bite and some energy. Same thing with Bertuzzi. That's that's just a different look. We've talked about it how many times. And it's not changing. Those four up top, they they all play the same way. Mm -hmm. They all get they the, have same the same temperament, attitude, same, same approach. But yep. if you surround them with people who have contrasting temperament, it I think it, it changes the whole dynamic of your group. I think that's what what Brad Trilliving is hoping for for sure. Um, all right, we'll come back and, and get into the story of the weekend. Mike Babcock. Is out. He wasn't fired. He resigned. Now there's some fine print in that. What? Inevitably, he was gone. He wasn't going to coach again. A lot of that is legalese. Crazy, crazy. But stuff. the fallout of Babcock, the fallout for the Blue Jackets, what it means for the future of that team, but not only that, the future of hockey in general based on what Babcock represented. We'll come back and get into that. Week two in the NFL continues tonight. we got picks still to come. Luke Wilson will join us as well on a Harry crazy day Ballard. in the NFL yesterday. Harry Ballard, we'll see what you got tonight. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them coming in here in terms of people comparing me to, uh, to some people, quite frankly, I don't want to be connected to. <laughs> I'll be honest. I do not want to be connected to a lot of these people. Get your damn act together. Yeah, so I'm on the clock. Team Owen Wilson also on the clock tonight. We'll get to that more still to come. And the Jays. How about them Jays? Yeah, Dude, how about what a them Jays? Flip. What a flip for what the Jays. A flip. Stati now, this is why, like, stats and projections and numbers and all that kind of stuff, like, you really got to be careful with that. Because I saw, remember I referenced, like, the likelihood of them making the playoffs, the statistical likeliness of them making the playoffs before the Texas series. Right. And if they won a game, two games, three games, yeah, four yeah, games. Yeah. I read online last night that after they swept the Sox, they're basically back to exactly where they were before that series started. So it's yeah. as if the series just never happened. But just the Texas last sweep, games off. Last it's games it's off. as if it never happened because not only did they sweep the Sox, Seattle and Texas got swept and Houston lost two of three. Right. 
like statistically almost impossible for it to break the way it broke for the Jays this weekend. But it did, and they're off tonight. They're in New York tomorrow. So more on the weekend that was and uh, more on what we can expect out of the Jays moving forward this week and possibly still pursuing. Well, in fact, they're in the driver's seat to pursue a playoff spot. So we'll get into that later this afternoon. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Week two in the NFL tonight, a dose of Monday Nighters. Double dose of Monday Nighters. I love it. I think that's the case next week, too. I think there's a two-pack of Monday Nighters in week three. Big supporter of that. So Luke Wilson will join us in studio at 5 o'clock. But um, we spent a lot of time last week talking about the Mike Babcock story. And when it originated from, you know, Paul Bizanet, Ryan Whitney, the Spit and Chicklets guys, like it blew up immediately. Right. Immediately, you knew this was going to take a life of its, uh, take on a life of its own. Where it was going to end up was anyone's guess. Like I, I'll admit, the day it came out, I was like, I don't think Babcock's going to get fired. Well, here. it took. It kind of like it blew up, and then it kind of died down because. Columbus made that statement. So you're kind of right. like, okay, I with guess, Jenner you know. and with Gudra, yeah, which so was more important like, than what the Jackets had to say personally. It was right. that the players they attached basically player statements to it. But who knows how they, how those statements from those two guys were formulated? Because did behind the scenes they think it was actually a joke themselves? Because there's no way in hell that those two guys, their statement was, yeah, I thought it was great. It, it was a great thing to get to know each other. This whole thing is a complete unmitigated disaster for the Columbus yes. Blue Jackets. Like, from top to bottom, whoever had the dumb idea about bringing Babcock in, and I was talking to somebody today, and the one word that comes up with this guy, he's one of the worst people that's ever walked the hallways of an NHL franchise. Everybody that's been involved in the game, and us three have been involved in the game our whole lives. And, Hayes, you know as many guys throughout the league as Jamie and myself. No one has a nice thing to say about the guy. And the one thing he couldn't do, the one thing he couldn't do when he took a new job after sitting out for three or four years was this garbage right here, and he did it. How stupid do you have to be? It's one thing being a bad guy, but he couldn't even fake it. Couldn't even fake it. He didn't even get to day one of training camp, and he got what he deserved. And his after hockey life is going to be so different now. Like this guy, he's probably got a boat. He does have a boatload of money, and he can put, kick his feet up at his cottage and stare at his deer or whatever he does. But now he's just going to sit there and have to marinate in it for so long, thinking everyone can't stand me because I'm such a moron. And he deserves every second yeah, of it. I'm, I'm not convinced he will. I mean, I'm, I'm not a mind reader, but I, I would guess he'll probably think I got screwed here. These guys are soft. Blah blah blah. Like because I was, got screwed here. That's. <laughs> I'll, I'll bet, I wouldn't be surprised if he had thoughts. Well, of that, did you see his apology? He didn't even apologize. He didn't, exactly. Well, anybody. He that's was just my like, ah, good luck, guys. Good luck Here, moving forward. Okay, what but idiot. you're right. But is this not the strangest form of, you know, weirdness out there? Like, I, I don't like... It's the weirdest form of firing saying, noodles, but I have to ask of, you. Of having have you ever or, in your life, you know a bunch of business people, you yes. have meetings all the time. Anyone in business or your whole life through hockey, has anybody ever said to you, I like you, man, you're a cool dude, but let's share pictures so we can get to know each other. Never. Well, that's where I'm that's coming been back established to. established like, that that's strange. But that's I mean, what everyone, I'm saying, there's, like, there's no other way around it. No. If, but, you, like, if you take, your, like, take yourself out of the situation and go, like 10 years from now, you look back on it, it's, Mike Babcock had a career, you know, Hall of Fame career. Like, oh, he didn't coach anymore. What happened? And then and the story is like, we grab some guy's phone and ask, like, it's just a weird, like, I, I think it's just so strange from top to bottom. It's unacceptable. Like, there's no, I'm not strange, it. But the word I keep attaching to is stupidity. Well, to sure. To think that you can grab a bunch of young kids' phones and just say, hang tight for a sec. I'm going to go through it and check out what I need to check well, out. And for anybody to think, Brian, sorry, anybody to think that this is him about getting to know somebody else is insane. Do you know why he wanted to look through guys' pictures? He wanted to look through guys' pictures to get something on them. The same thing he did to Mitch Marner when he asked him to write down who wasn't in shape. And Mitch had to sit there, God bless him, and write down who the least conditioned guys in the team were. And the guy jacked him up. He jacked him up well, in front of everybody and said, this is what Mitchie thinks. So he was going to do the same thing to somebody that a picture he didn't like and say, you're, you were drunk that night in, in the summer and you should have been training. Be that's it. why he I was take, looking at the pictures. I, that's the thing. It's just a weird, 
Like, what are you going to get out of somebody's photos? Well, let's let's clarify something here. Mike Babcock is a sh- obviously he he is a bad dude, or he treats people poorly. He's like got garbage. a track record. Lack of respect. That's <clears throat> what it is. He's not stupid though. This this was strategic. Right. It was wrong. He never should have done it, and he deserves to be out. And the second it got out, and the second the ball got rolling, that players were like, hey, I was really uncomfortable, or this was a serious yeah. violation, and this, or, or I was misled, right? right? It, it was, he made it out to be something that, that it wasn't. He had to go. And, well, and Brian, Columbus is absolutely screw this stupid. up. But I'm going to go back to stupidity to think that that strategy would be in place in something that would be smart to do. How dumb do you have to be to think that's I'll the first strategy? I'll tell you how dumb you have to be because he never had to learn anything. He never was rehabbing. I said that last week. He was waiting for every penny to get into his account from Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment. The guy literally signed with Columbus the second it ended. The last check went in the second it was invested in his account, he signed with Columbus. To the right. point where it was announced before yeah, we the all last check it. kicked in. We all knew about it. This guy was not hunting or fishing or skiing thinking, I need to be different. He never thought he had to be different. He never apologized for anything. He didn't think anything was wrong with his past. And right. so he showed up in Columbus not thinking, I'm going to be different, thinking I'm going to be the same because I'm Mike Babcock and I don't have to be. So again... Does it look ridiculous? Yes. Did he have to pay for it? Absolutely. Right. All I'm saying is from his standpoint, he was not coming in here thinking, watch this, I'm going to be Cavalier. He was thinking, I'm going to – Columbus has paid for Mike Babcock. I'm giving him Mike Babcock. Well, and now Columbus and now has he's paid for it. They Absolutely. And, and, and the sad thing about it is that he could have – and it's sad, it's sad for Mike Babcock because the coaches I know that are in the National Hockey League that I had and that I know right now – Demanding people, guy like Peter Laviolette, demanding coach. Got to be, you got to play good. Pete DeBoer, John Cooper, demanding coaches, but they're not garbage people off the ice. No, they're not garbage people. They wouldn't pull that crap with Mike Badano, trying to get fifteen hundred games. They're comfortably in the playoffs, and he scratches them for six games. That's just a bad guy. He's a bad guy, and the sad element to it is. If you're around one of the great coaches like in the world, like to ever coach, you're just you're impressed by it. You're like, that's so impressive. That guy must be an unbelievable coach. You would want to play for him. You would always want to be around it and get some knowledge and talk to him or whatever. But that guy was such a bad guy, it just ruined all of it. And he thought he had to be something else and do all these stupid things and garbage things to people to enhance his persona. I have no idea. Maybe he has these special needs where he's just got to do this to feel like power, power over people. I have no idea why he did that. it, like, but what a shame. Well, like his, like you think about the after career of this, the afterlife in hockey, he's probably never going to go to Canada stuff, never going to go to, you know, Stanley Cup and Detroit. Reu- Nobody's going to want him there. Hall of Fame's probably gone. Deserves well, it. Yeah. Deserves that's, it. That's it's the amazing a, thing is when you consider that it wasn't that long ago, people were tracking flights out of Detroit to basically fly him in as if the Pope was coming into I town. was yes. down at the rink. All of the MLSC employees were down there anxiously awaiting exactly. to put eyes on this guy he and got say, the, this is the next coach. The biggest contract in NHL history for a coach, a contract that still has not been touched by anyone else, and I'm not sure when it will be or when it will be surpassed. It likely will be at some point. Right. But he set a new bar for coaching. He came in here as if this is the best coach in the world, and he's going to change everything for an organization that needed the help. Yep. And now when you consider this, you know, what was that, eight years ago, you're right Oh, Like, you know, Team Canada, 2010, when they have their 20th anniversary, 25th anniversary, I'm not sure if Mike Babcock's invited. Which, when Detroit has their 20th anniversary for winning the Cup, I doubt he's there. I'm not sure he's going to want to show up there. And that's all because he couldn't even get to camp, which is amazing. Sad. Camps it's, are it's opening on like Wednesday. It, that's why Mike it, Babcock is not even at camp. That's why he I'm, couldn't it's even so, make it to camp. It's think insane. about that statement. It's crazy. It's crazy. Couldn't make it to camp. Couldn't make but it that, to camp. That's that's why I'm, I'm saying the transaction I used was weird. It's beyond weird. Like it's it's you know the power, the lack of respect, all of that. He didn't learn his lesson. He just did it in a different form. In, in a new organization. Well, what do you think this means for the future of coaching in the NHL? In other words, like you mentioned, you guys played for tough coaches. Yeah. But there have we know 
there have been coaches throughout the history of this game in every level. Let's be honest. In right. junior, it happens. Even in minor hockey, there's some wild stuff that you hear about. Is this like the tide turning to the point where... Dude, the tide was turned before this haze because no other coach in the National Hockey League would even think there's... to pull this garbage and stupidity. The, you but I'm not somebody talking about... You're talking about, talking about hard, the, specific you're, you're talking hard okay. looking at phones. You're talking about hard yes, coaches. I'm talking about coaches where it's like they they can't wait to get at you and they and they make your life miserable and they grind at you and they just you know cuz you've heard from players throughout the history of the game where it's like we hated that guy yes hated him I'll, because I'll, he was he just did everything he could to grind on us and to, but the argument was he's a great coach yes yeah. he's a hard ass but he's a great coach the country club's over because this guy's rolling through. But but like, yeah. is that coach? Is that coach it gone better, now? I, probably in where the shape of things are headed. But I'll give you an example. And I never had him. But Ken Hitchcock apparently was a grading coach as far as on you constantly. I remember Brett Hall telling me they'd be up three one with ten minutes left, and Hitch would be all over the team. Didn't missed your check here, missed your dump in, just constantly on you for eighty two games into the playoffs. I, I still believe that coaching hard but with respect is is fine. Yeah. But there's a line, and that's where you, what you're asking. That's what I'm asking. What you're it's asking the line. is the habitual the, is, line crosser. I think they're are. all aware of that, Brian. They're all aware that the games play the, the game's different, the players are different, the parents are actually involved now. Think about right. that. At an NHL level, guys' parents are involved in certain discussions and the way things are played out. And for Mike Babcock, there's an old philosophy from coaches, and it was, I think, passed down from one another, where it was like, you better screw with the players first, because if they yes. start screwing with you, then you're done, and you're fired. Mm -hmm. And if you let them run it, and, and it turns into a gong show, and everyone says country club, and Mike Babcock just took that too far. X's and O's, he could coach. I've heard from numerous Detroit Red Wing players and different guys that were under Mike Babcock, one of the best hockey minds and coaches of all time. No no question about it, but easily one of the worst people I've ever been around in life. So yeah. that guy was both. He was both of those people at the same time. But you're right going forward, though. What does that mean? You know, there are still our hardened coaches in the National Hockey League. Lav Laviolette, Tortorella, mm -hmm. guys like that, they're hardened. But John Tortorella, if you take a look at his pathway, there's guys that hate him, there's guys that love you. And, and the difference is... They have to change their tactics as well. They've got to grow with the, the changing times. And with society. With society, society is just changing. in, in yes. general. Yeah. So it is still comes back to respect. You can still be hard and honest with respect, but you do have to treat people a lot differently in today's world, what's accepted by societal demands. Right. And that's the thing. There there is a line there where like you you've been using the Medano example, the Spezza example. Right. Those are those are Poor decisions, bad guy decisions, but not your fired decisions. No. Yeah. Those are not your canceled no. and you're out of the game decisions. Those right. are those are still stuff that I think, as much as you might feel uneasy about it, and I'm not sure it helps your room. In fact, I'd be shocked if it did. I know. Hayes, I still think I coaches to are going to live on that line. I, I get it. But I talked to an established NHL exec yesterday and said those two examples, anybody that pulls that stunt, like you're comfortably in the playoffs and you do that to Mike Medano, it sticks out as being more than just a motivator sure. or a guy that it, it, it's bad guy stuff. Like you know what I mean? No, I, and I understand Jason Spezza, that. they're playing the Ottawa Senators. They were picked to be the worst team in the league that year. And Spezza signs for a bottom dollar contract, gets tickets for thirty family members and friends, and he tells them in the morning he's gonna be scratched for some right handed shot, some guy number twenty six that I'd never even heard of. And then he played I don't the even next know the night guy's in, name. in Columbus, I believe it was. Wasn't it Joey Anderson? Or, I don't know. It, I think it might have been, but I'm pretty Anyways, sure it was a back to back. And I think right. they played in Columbus, that, ironically here, here's enough, the, thing. the next night. That stuff, Insane. we can cherry pick all along. That's, cra that's terrible stuff to do to quality people like Madano, Hall of Famer, Spezza, one of the most beloved players. Mm -hmm. That's just crappy things to do. This stuff, this is weird. And this is, it's also, it's a power thing. It was unacceptable. Columbus, I, I do. You know what? John Davidson and Kekalainen came out today and said, we, we screwed up. Wrong hire. 
They owned it immediately. I don't know the ripple effect there. Ownership's got to be pissed because well, they had to write a check. I guarantee Babcock well, didn't go away for well, free. That, that's what comes. That's the legalese between the resignation and also not admitting guilt. He said, I'm a distraction, so I'm going to leave. That's a right. lawyer writing that saying, all right, don't admit to anything. Don't fall. Don't say anything. Right. And we're going to work out a package to go. And like now, Pascal Vincent is the head coach. This guy, like. He was the assistant. He probably should, thought he'd be showing up, playing good cop, moving pucks around through camp. Now he's but got hazy. a one camp and come up with a message to his team. I let's, feel for the guy. A terrible circle back, start. Let's circle back on the original thing that we were talking about with this incident. Was Boone Jenner and Johnny Gaudreau saying, yeah, you know, we didn't have a problem with it. We thought that was good, you know, a good way to get to know it. Like, were they told to say that? Like, who's responsible well, for those comments? Because that, that's obviously not they how they felt. It. But, they're, but individually, you're allowed to have that interpretation yourself. Like, right. that's the thing about a team, as you guys know. Everyone looks at it differently, and I guarantee Babcock approached it differently. Right. But I, I hear what you're saying, though, because it was a sanitized watering of, yeah. you know, dousing right. of the fire type comment. But... That doesn't mean Boone Jenner was lying or was coerced. It could like have he gone down. Well, he could have gone like, down. I had no problem. And he's allowed to not have my a problem. Inter- okay, of fair it, point. Though, you don't all point. have to my, have the same My interpretation of it is Babs wouldn't pull that with a 10-year vet. Right. I don't think it he would It sounds like it was a younger kid who's impressionable. You got the power. You, you think if that's the way I got it out of it is he might have had a, a, a very – decent interaction with the captain of his team is like show me a picture of your family how how was your summer you catch any fish you, all of that type of stuff every interaction might have been different but you get down the pecking order to somebody where it's like i'm hall of fame coach you're a ex you know you're, you're a, on the you're, you're on a, the edge of even making edge the of team. making the team i guess you're a guys kid. to sum it all up the columbus blue jackets didn't do a good enough investigating because Marty Walsh and Ronnie Hainsey had to get down there, and they got to the bottom of it. Yeah. So maybe Columbus do a, didn't do a good – and good on those two they guys for doing it. that. Well, oh, yeah. Well, but that's a is, good start for Marty I, Walsh to say, I, you know what, I'll be, I'll be boots on the ground if something goes down. And him and his, his, his top guy, Ron Hainsey, went down there, and they sorted it out. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, too, I said this last week, they have to do stuff like that in today's world. Like, you have to dig deeper into it. You don't just take face value. Do your investigation. Talk to everybody. Get all the information in front of you before you make your decision. Well, Good on the PA for doing that. Yeah, I, I think really the PA good. clearly did a, a very good job here of representing their players. That's what they're supposed to do. Listening to their players, investigating what's going on here because it was a significant flare-up. Right. But I also, like, I'm not buying Columbus was ignorant to anything. You know, are we, we, we did our due diligence. No, you didn't. You, you fell in love with the idea that Mike Babcock is a great coach when he's on the bench. That didn't change today, right? right? What he does off the bench, how he approaches players, the way that he has interactions, that has been exposed. And it's, it was exposed when he left Toronto. But behind the bench, nobody, and I mean nobody, can suggest this guy is anything but a great coach. And a winning coach. But it doesn't and, matter now. No, I understand that. But what I'm saying is Columbus was blinded by that. That's why they hired him. Right. They didn't hire him because they thought they were getting some new version. They hired the version of Mike Babcock because there's one, and he's right. proved that. There's no yeah. there's no new version. And, there's and, no different Mike Babcock. And I like JD. And they were and intoxicated like by that. Yeah, and I like Yarmo, but horrible decision. And I, I just what you just said, they were thinking, we've got to get this organization back on track. Mm-hmm. And Craig Button will always say, regardless of the position of your organization, coaching is mandatory. Well, And, and they, they went and tried to hire the best coach they could. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, it was Mike Babcock. And the leopard Terrible. didn't change his spots. Ultimately, that's right. the thing, and they found that out. And is it a blessing or a detriment you found that out two, a week before camp as opposed to at Christmas time? And who knows? That could be a way of but looking at it. And now take a look at you got that. a fresh start. But what like that room must be going oh bonkers. Well, God. it's it's either that or there's a sigh of relief going, okay, that that mess is gone. Mm-hmm. We can just relax and play hockey now. Like I don't know what type of culture that was going to be. If he was going to be the hardened coach that made everyone walk on eggshells and you know pulled some other nonsense, you better that you dealt with it now. And, and move on. But there, it's probably going to take, like, Yarmo. it sounds like Yarmo and JD talked to the team today and apologized, said, that's on us, we need to be better. But you know, what? where do you go from here? Well, again, I 
I think they're a team in transition that if I don't think is a very good team well, anyway. Uh, uh, one guy had 500 bucks oh, on it. I was convinced that they're a playoff they team. Might be a, this might galvanize the group you into think? a playoff position. Uh, well, listen, if it does, then I will be their biggest supporter because that would be an incredible story. That's think, something I'm willing to say sec, right now. I think if... If they don't get in, I, you owe me a free pass after no, the drama. No, no, Absolutely no. not. The books have accepted the bet. The bets are in. You've been given your slip. And That's you like somebody getting it. injured or in pregame warm-up or something in, in a football game. Yeah. Some books will allow you off the hook. I happen to be one that won't. I happen to be Well, you are diligent. losing on some other books, so you do That's need an thing. even up right I, now. Some guy just sent a picture, and I, I am <laughs> I'm seething. I'm disturbed. What? It's my face blended into a famous Harold Ballard pig. <laughs> I'm going to tweet this out right now. I'll retweet it. I might post it on Instagram because it's so sickening. Like it's you, like, it's you know a, how they it, can do those face those apps or whatever? Picks. I'll, I'll retweet it right now. And it's my face. <laughs> <laughs> it's my face. You'll know the picture. The face. He's yelling yeah. at the press. He's yelling Brian at the Hayes media. Brian Hayes plus Harry Ballard. You're Barry Ballard. Hazy B. Ballard. Hazy Ballard. Oh, I need to see this. I picture. just read Makita's bucket tw- tweeted this out. Oh, and um, any <laughs> look at that picture. Oh, look at oh that thing up on TSN four. That's me as Harold Ballard making NFL picks. With the goggles. On. Hazy Ballard. It. Hazy Ballard. Hazy Ballard. Yeah, wow. isn't that crazy? Look at that hand. That hand looks evil. Well, he was yeah. Harold he wasn't Ballard. the most popular guy here, right? No, you know, Harold Ballard really was unpopular. Well. You know, you hope that I, – I also think – we'll get it after the break, but this has hurt his legacy. I don't know if Hall of Fame comes – like, oh, does, it, does it get to a point where it's like, that's I, it? I, I don't know. I mean, you never know. And with the Hall of Fame, I, I have made arguments before that it should be based on, on your statistics and what you do. And he's a Hall of Fame. And, and there, are, there is obviously right. certain areas where you say, no, 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 we can't go that far. Right. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if this excluded him from the hall. Again, it wouldn't surprise me at all if it excluded him from anniversaries. Like, this guy was the head coach of one of the most famous teams in Canadian hockey history. Yeah. One of the five most famous teams in Canadian hockey history. He was the guy behind the bench. Yeah. Winning gold on Canadian soil. And now it's like. The only thing not, he's, he's gotten out of all of this that. transaction is cash. And he's, he's made a lot. He paid a whack yep. of cash. And he had yeah. a lot of cash anyway. Yeah, and and yet now he's he's out. Mike Babcock out. Luke Wilson in studio in about fifteen minutes. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Luke Wilson. I can see him out there waiting. He's so happy. He's just smiling. Him and the grappler are having a little stop and chat. Go and like to go like this to him. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Listen, he's pick. You guys are picking winners. I got to give you. I got to give you a lot of credit. It's only one weekend or two weekends. No. Two weekends in, I think they're five and zero. Oh. Now they're getting the layups of the. Like there was no way Shut Kansas up, City. Dude. dude, do you you think Kansas City was going zero and two or dude, not? I knew dust in my up? heart of heart. I knew in my heart of hearts the Bills were going to crush the Raiders. Yeah. I knew that Kansas City was going to go down there. I threw it out there to throw a wobble at you that Get Jacksonville serious. might be a threat because I remember saying to you. Guess who they got to go down and face? Jacksonville. You're like, yeah, yeah, that's a tough opponent. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it well, wasn't. Let me ask you it this. Wasn't. Do you guys believe that Hayes can get it back on track or Joe Burrow? Who's ne- who's first to get Dude, it back on Dude, we got to ask Burrow. Luke about that guy. His whole body language after signing that contract is almost like a little bit too casual, man. Well, he's hurt. You know though, what I mean? The calf. He's re-aggravated the injury. I th- I think they're in, they're in massive trouble if he's hurt. Like uh, that goes yes. without saying. Like right, if he's right. banged up, because they might only, have been an immediate amount of trouble with him healthy. Yes, he's looked. He has really looked bad. Let's be honest. Like it, the stats have been very underwhelming. They've lost two divisional games, yeah. like Cleveland, Baltimore. Now they're chasing it. Baltimore's a good team. Um, you know, one of either Cleveland's going two and zero tonight, or they're going to be one and one. Pittsburgh's going to be one and one tonight. So, one way or the other. Cincinnati's waking up in last place in their own division, and there's a chance Burrow has to miss time here. I think there's massive concern in Cincinnati, and I think there should be. I, I wouldn't say that if he was healthy. If he was 100% healthy, I, I have enough faith in Joe Burrow that he's going to snap out of it and get better. They got the weapons there. He's a, great, he's a great quarterback. He's proven that. But if he's banged up, even if he's at 70%, 80%, you start 0-2 at 70%, that is trouble. 
Yeah. That is How about serious the Jets? trouble. They were like, Zach Wilson's our guy. Zach Wilson's our guy. Oh. I guarantee you they were hammering the phone lines last night. It's sickening, man. Hammering. He's just, He's just throwing, throwing picks. picks. And I, I feel like that Dallas defense is ruthless. They are ruthless. Dude, and they you got know what? I'll give night. props to Dallas. Like, their overhype machine, they're, they're damn good. They they're are. Good. They're really good. It's clear cut in the NFC. It's, it's Dallas. It's the Niners. It's the Eagles. And then everyone else is chasing for some relevancy. It feels that way. But, um, yeah, if you're a Jet fan, you're just like, I, I can't believe it. Like, I, you know what's coming. They cannot win with Zach Wilson as their quarterback. Yeah. It's an impossibility. No but what do you do? Do can't you try happen. to put a Band-Aid on it, or are you trying to get the USC kid now? Ooh, like, I think you punt on the year personally, and you hope yeah, that Rodgers yeah. returns next year. That's what you're hoping for. All right, Luke Wilson coming in. We'll look back on yesterday, tee up the Monday Nighters tonight. More on the lease back in town, this Mike Babcock situation. The Jays are off tonight. They're in New York tomorrow night. The Jays are alive. They are the undertaker. They are still alive. Overdrive continues. Hour two up next, TSN 1050 and on TSN 4.